What's up everybody? Owsley here with another touch designer tutorial. Um, so this one, this is a cool technique that I've been uh, working with for, for a couple days, just kind of um, trying some different stuff. But uh, it, the inspiration for it came from uh, this post on uh, Fact Mag. It would appear to be done by... Uh, I'm not sure, I, the, the, this combination of people, but I looked at this and I thought, um, you know, it doesn't say what they made it with, but I was thinking, well, if I was going to do that in Touch Designer, I'm pretty sure I know I, how I'd go about it. So, um, this was, this was the inspiration and, uh, I didn't come up with exactly this, but, uh, I'm, I am pretty sure I nailed the technique it's it's fairly simple so anyway um let me close that come back to here so uh so this this is really just taking one video and then using another video um to displace it so it can be anything um i downloaded a whole bunch of videos uh just off of adobe stock um to try this with so I, I got a bunch of uh, different nature videos some drone videos uh, oh actually this one's really cool this fire video I'll drag that in um, that one I thought was gonna be cooler but eh, it wasn't um, this one uh, this woman dancing uh, this one actually works pretty well um, but uh, anyway, it's it, it doesn't matter so much what the uh, what the video is. Um, you can do this with anything. Uh, and how I'm going to set this up in the file that I uh, give to my patrons is I'm I'm just going to put a uh, a null um, and a movie file in top, uh, and I'll I'll just set it up that way for you because uh, it really doesn't matter what video you use, and I, w I would encourage you to um, explore creatively with what you're using. So anyway, here's a, here's a couple, uh, and then um, I was also using some exported videos of textures I made uh, as well. Um, find what I'm after here uh, yeah this one's this one's good so okay cool so I've got my assets but like I said this this can be anything um, this can also be uh, I mean you could do this with textures but it, it's sort of um, I guess Worse, we'd be moving into a different technique at that point. So anyway, um, let's let's just uh, get this started. So we don't even need feedback or anything for this. Um, I'm just going to use a displace top, and then I'm going to grab whatever the uh, second video I want to displace it with is, and then pipe that into the second. <laughs> Honestly, that's kind of it. Um, however, uh, the look that I wanted was, um, I guess, a bit less drastic. So let's play with some settings and get this to look a bit more interesting. Uh, first thing I'm going to mess with is the displace weight. You can see it, it drastically changes the way it looks depending how far down I move this. Um, it starts to look more like a glitch or data moshing effect uh, the lower the displace weight gets um, but if you go too low then you start to lose lose the effect so somewhere like uh, somewhere somewhere in there and you can animate this too uh, with any just any chop or uh, or you can make it audio reactive um, so that's kind of the starting point I want but uh, if I want to get a look for this, that is, um, 
I guess just a bit less simplistic, uh, there's a few things I can do with the secondary input. Um, so, and I use this in feedback loops where I have a display stop all the time. So if I throw a uh, slope in there, um, and then I just send the value up significantly, I start to get sort of an emboss map. You start to, I feel like you really start to see the 3D texture of the, the road behind her kind of mapped on to our, our fire in the background here. Um, and that's interesting, but uh, you know, you can, the other thing that I, I liked that sort of started to give this um, like a plastic wrap look is when I put a blur in. Again, something that I do all the time in feedback loops with more abstract textures. But uh, if you want this to look more, um, so if you want it to look smoother, uh, up the pre-shrink. Um, and of course you can, you know, get it past the point of recognition with that. But uh, yeah, I really, I really like this. Um, and of course we, we don't have to displace that with that. We can put, like I said, any input video. We could make this one the input video. And then, uh, I mean, that's kind of interesting when it's displacing itself. <laughs> but um, this, if we were to just switch them, yeah, it doesn't quite work as well in reverse with these two. So um, I like the I like the fire or landscapes as the the input. There it is, displacing itself. It's kind of cool. Um, but using more abstract things like textures, uh, you can get some pretty interesting effects as well. So here we have this uh, this fractal texture coming in. Um, and it's, it's looking a little, uh, not high res, so let me do something here. So, uh, one thing I did when I was messing with this, just the, you can also see that there's some black edges coming in. Um, Oh no, I'm sorry, I don't want to transform. I want a fit. Uh, if I had a fit top to uh, both, both inputs, uh, then I can control the overall resolution of this. Now, um, my most common use case is Instagram, uh, and that leaves me with the vertical format, so 1080 by 1920, make that fit. And then let's change that to uh, fit vertical, so we get the whole thing, good. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing here. Fit 1080, 1920, uh, change it fit to this one, I think we all, yeah, we also want fit vertical, okay. Um, and then, so the black edges are still there. So in the case of this fire one, I'm gonna scale it up just a little bit. Um, this of course would not be necessary depending on the source video, but, but there we go. This is kind of the look I'm going for. Um, now you might notice that the videos are starting and stopping at inconvenient uh, points. That can be fixed. Um, that can be fixed by going into uh, whatever whatever videos we're using and setting them to locked to timeline. Uh, and then you're going to want to make sure that whatever videos you're using, just set your timeline to the length of the shortest one, and then um, you shouldn't have any issues with them starting and stopping playback uh, at these kind of inconvenient times. Now I haven't done that with either of these videos and I'm pretty sure they're different lengths. So you're gonna see them kind of hopping in and out in the background here. Um, 
Okay, cool. I'll just switch this, you know, switch some inputs again real quick just to just to show you that this this works with with a lot of different videos. Uh, you can turn the blur off if you like, get more drastic results. Um, Displace weight. Yeah, cool. So there you have it. Using uh, one video to displace another, and uh, like I said, for here I'll just do it real quick. This is what uh, if you're one of my patrons, this is this is what you'll get. So. Um, Actually, no, we don't need a null, we just need a movie file in. So let's do a movie file in. And then we'll grab a second movie file in. Uh, yeah, and those are the inputs. Um, and that way I will not get uh, taken to jail by Adobe Stock for distributing their videos commercially. Um, yeah, I don't know where that license ends and begins, so, anyway, there you have it, pardon the banana, uh, but, um, Pexels is a good place for source video, um, and, uh, and like you saw here, uh, if you ever export videos of textures you're making, those make great, uh, candidates for displacing things as well. Um, and of course you can always build a texture from scratch, you can run a noise into that second input. Um, displaces, uh, I use it in almost everything. Um, it's one of the, one of the better operators. Um, and touch designer. Alright, I am rambling at this point. I'm signing off. It is 2.30am. Uh, Alright, see you in the next one.